G'day guys, my name's David Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And in this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to play Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now this is probably one of my favourite songs of all time and when I first picked up guitar, I made it a mission to just learn this song. Although this was a tricky song for me at the time, I practiced day and night until I got it right. So for the basics, you'll just need your guitar and standard tuning and you won't need a capo. Now I'll be teaching you this on the acoustic, but at the playthrough at the end, I'll be playing it on an electric guitar like the recording, but it does sound good on an acoustic as well. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you're stuck in a rut and you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course where you'll find exclusive content that I don't teach here on YouTube. So let's jump straight into the intro. And we're going to need to play a D chord shape that looks like this. Now this is a bit of a tricky shape. You need your pinky on the 5th fret of the 5th string, ring finger on the 4th fret of the 4th, index on the 2nd fret of the 3rd, and your middle finger on the 3rd fret of the 2nd string. Now John Frusciante, the guitarist of Chili Peppers, likes to use his fingers when playing this intro but the new guitarist of the Chili Peppers actually uses his pick, and I've actually always used a pick as well, so that's how I'm gonna teach you how to play it. I think it's easier as well to use the pick. So we're gonna start with a chunk of six notes on this chord shape. We're gonna start by plucking the fifth string, fourth string, third, back to fourth, up to the second string, and then ending on the third string. And that'll sound like this. Now you'll notice up here that there's a note in brackets, that third fret of the second string. Now that's an optional note that you can play at the same time as the fifth string. And to do that, you'll just need a hybrid pick. So you'll pluck the fifth string with the plectrum, but at the same time, your middle finger will pluck the second string. Now that is optional, and that note is actually overdubbed in the recording as well. So it's a second guitar playing just that note by itself. So after those six notes, we have a four note run here, and it's a bit of a scale run. So your ring finger is fourth fret of the fifth string, so pluck that, and then go down to the second fret of the fifth string, and then with our pinky finger, fifth fret of the sixth, and then with our ring finger, fourth fret of the sixth. So those four notes all together. And in terms of picking, you should go with a down, up, down, up alternate picking pattern there. And all the suggested picking is up here in the tabs as well, just underneath all the notes. So in total for the first bar. For our next chord shape, we're going to an F sharp bar chord like this. Again, there's an optional note at that first pluck, which is the second string of the F sharp bar chord at the same time as the sixth string, but that is optional and it's overdubbed in the recording. So you can just pluck the sixth string by itself if you want. But again, we have a six note chunk, which goes sixth string, fifth, fourth, back to fifth, up to the third, and then we end on the fourth string. And then there's another four note run. It's another sort of similar scale pattern. So with your pinky finger where it is already, we're gonna hit that and then go down to the second fret of the fourth string. And then pinky goes to the fifth fret of the fifth string. And then we end this run on the second fret of the fifth string. And again, the picking motion should be down, up, down, up, which will sound like this. So in total for that bar, Now for our second line of tab, we are going back to our D position like this. But to start it off, you do need to slide your pinky finger from the fourth fret of the fifth string to the fifth fret of the fifth string. And then assume the position of your D chord. Now that might be a little tricky, but do start with your pinky finger and then put your other fingers where they need to go. Then after our slide, we get our fingers into position very quickly. And then it's 4th string, 5th string, 3rd string, 4th string. And then we need to go up to the 2nd string, pluck that. But then you're going to quickly take your pinky finger 
and hammer on and pull off from that third fret of the second string like that so pluck it once but your pinky hammers on and pulls off onto that fifth fret it's a very quick motion and then we finish that lick by hitting the third string like that and so far and then you get your pinky back into its original position which is on the fifth fret of the fifth string and then we're going to strum this chord but we're going to slide it all up two frets like that and then strum it another time up at this higher position and in total for this bar For our fourth bar we go back to this F sharp bar chord and it's exactly the same as the second bar in that first line. Now for the second half of the intro, it's more or less exactly the same as the first half with a few minor variations. So to start off the second half we do need to do that slide up from the fourth fret to the fifth fret to get into this D shape. So after we do the slide we get into our position then we go fourth string fifth string third string fourth string second string and then third string so all of that and then we're going to do that scale run that we had at the start of the intro and then the f sharp chord shape we've already learnt We've already learnt this next bar, which has that hammer on with the pinky. And for our final F sharp shape, there's a little bit of a variation at the end. Concentrate on the first five plucks, which go sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, fifth string, and then third string. And then we have a two note chunk, which is just the fourth string and fifth string, very quickly, one after the other. And then to end this, we go 3rd string, 4th string, 5th string. But on that last 5th string note, we're going to slide it up to the 7th, which sounds like this. And in total for that F sharp. And that's it for the intro, which is perhaps the trickiest part of the song. But don't be too discouraged. I would just practice it really slowly, bit by bit, until you can get it. Now again, the suggested picking direction is up here in the tab as well. Now you don't have to play it exactly like this, but it is the most economical way of plucking it, in my opinion. So in total, the intro will sound like this. Alright, so now we get to the first verse and it's a whole lot easier than the intro, we're just strumming bar chords here. Now we're going to start with an E bar chord like this on the 5th string. And the easiest way I believe to play it is you just take your ring finger and bar it across the ninth frets of the 4th, 3rd and 2nd string, like that. You can play it like this though with all your fingers, but it might get a little cramped there, especially if you have thicker fingers. So I like to play these type of bar chords with my ring finger barring. The E bar chord, we're going to a B bar chord. Now it's the same shape technically as an F, but all the way up, you just slide it up to 7th, 9th and 8th frets. Now the way that John Frushanti will actually play this bar chord though is like this. So he'll reach his thumb over to hit the 6th string bass note, and then the index finger actually only needs to bar across the 7th fret of the 2nd and 1st strings. Your ring pinky and middle fingers will just remain in their ordinary positions for a normal bar chord. But for this altered shape, it means your index finger only needs to hit these two strings 
and your thumb comes over the top and hits the seventh fret of the sixth string. Now it's not 100% necessary for you to hit that bass note. You can go from the fifth string onwards, but ideally you do want to hit that bass note. And this is a technique that John Frushanti uses a lot. John Mayer uses it a lot. And it's just a more comfortable way of playing a bar chords, especially if you're standing up and playing electric guitar. It's easy to just reach your thumb over and do that shape as opposed to trying to get your index finger up like this. So that B bar chord will be on the end bit after the two, and so far. One, and two, and three, and four, and... Our next chord shape will be a C sharp minor. So what we'll do is we'll leave our ring and pinky finger where they are. We'll hit these two strings together, but then we'll slide them up to the 11th frets. And then our index finger just needs a bar across the 9th fret of the 3rd and 2nd strings. Now we're going to be doing an up stroke on these 2 or 3 strings of this chord shape and then muting shortly after. So slide up, up stroke and mute. Like that. That's it for the C sharp minor. Then we're going to a G sharp minor. So just slide this exact shape down to the 4th and 6th frets like this. We're strumming this on the end beat after the two, and then we're going up to an A major bar chord like this, which is the same shape as that B major bar chord just down here. That's on the end beat after the three. So in total for this first line, we'll sound like this. Now the second line of tab is very similar. We have our E, and then we go to our B, but we differ here in the next bar. So we're going up to the C sharp minor. We're just playing that normally on the one beat. And then on the end beat after the two, we're going to this A bar chord. So we're skipping this G sharp minor bar chord. In the second line, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And that's it for verse one, which will sound like this all together. play that through twice for the first verse and then we have our short break which is just an E major 7 chord shape like this. So index finger on the 7th fret of the 5th, ring finger on the 9th fret of the 4th string, middle finger on the 8th fret of the 3rd and pinky finger on the 9th fret of the 2nd string. And you can hit that top 6th string as well. And we just hold that out. Now we get to verse 2 and this is where all the cool licks come in but the chord progression itself will be exactly the same as the first verse. Our licks will just be based around those chords. So we're gonna start with our E bar chord like this, and we're gonna start with a down strum, and then a quick up strum on the higher strings like that. And you wanna quickly just mute that shortly after you do that up strum. And then we're going to our B bar chord like this, strumming that, and then we have our first lick. So to start this lick, we're gonna do a quick upstroke. Now on this upstroke, you do need to hit two strings at the same time, the third and the second strings. And then we're gonna hit the fourth string, and then you're gonna pluck the third string, but at the same time, take your pinky finger, so lift that up, hammer it on, and pull it off on that third string. Shortly after that hammer on pull off, your pinky does need to go back into its original position because we'll pluck that fourth string again and then end on that third string. So in total for that short lick. And all together for the first bar. Next we go to our C sharp minor chord. But again, we're going to start by sliding our ring and pinky finger up from these ninth frets to the 11th fret. And then you get your index finger into position for that C sharp minor. We're going to go up stroke on the higher strings, down stroke on some of these lower strings, and then finally end on an up stroke. So I'll sound like this. And then we go to our G sharp minor and then to our A bar chord, like normal. Now after this A bar chord, we have another lick here, 
Now what we need to do is pluck the first string, but you can lift all these fingers up now because your ring finger will need to hammer on and pull off onto the seventh fret of the first string and your middle finger comes back down on that sixth fret of the third string and we're plucking the third and second strings together. So that's the lick by itself, just a hammer on, pull off and end with two strings. And then total for this bar. The start of our second line of tab is exactly the same as the first line of tab. And for our fourth bar, we're going to do our C sharp minor slide again. But then instead of going down to this G sharp minor, we just go down to this A bar chord, strum that, and then we're going to pluck the first string, second string, and third strings just by themselves. So that final bar. And in total for verse two, we have this. For the second verse, you just play that through twice, and then again we have our break, which is that E major 7, before the first chorus. Now we get to our chorus, and again, most of it is based around bar chords. So we're going to start with the fifth string F sharp minor bar chord. Now the timing is what's most important here for this chorus, so there will be timing annotations at the bottom of these tabs. So we're going to start by hitting this bar chord this F sharp minor on the end beat after the one. So it'll go one and two. So it's not on the down beat, it's on that up beat. Then for our next chord shape, we go to our E bar chord and we're gonna strum this three times. So once on the end beat after the two, once on the three beat, and then finally on the four beat. So we go one and two and three and four and, and one more time, one and two and three and four and and then we're going to go to a B chord like this now this is a little tricky what you need to do index finger on the ninth fret of the fourth string then you'll have your middle finger on the 11th fret of the third string and your ring finger will be on the 11th fret of the first string and your pinky will go on the 12th fret of the second so that's our B chord shape like this now, if that is a little too tricky, you can just play these top three strings instead, which is just a bit like a D chord shape all the way up here. But John Frushanti plays it like this. Alternatively, you can play a B bar chord as well if you wanted to. So we're going to strum this chord shape with the down, up, down, up, and that's at the start of the next bar. And then we're going to go back to our F sharp minor on the end beat after the two, the end beat after the three, and the four beat. So I'll go like this, one and two and three and four. And finally, we're going to end this chorus with some muted strums. You'll just lift the pressure up off your fretting hand. So you'll still be making contact with the strings, but they'll be muted. And this way you can go down, up, down, up, and you get a cool muted sound. So that's what we need to do at the end, down, up, down, up. And in total for the chorus, we have this, one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and now that's it for the chorus and we do just need to loop that again and again now i do want to note that those last two muted strums are on the one e beat just before we start our next loop which is that f sharp minor on the end beat after the one. Hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much, but basically it just means that we just loop right back into the start and there's no gap in between those mutes and the first F sharp minor. So to demonstrate, one, two, So that's it for the chorus, and when we get to our third verse, it's pretty much exactly the same as the second verse. There is one variation that we can learn here though. Now the variation itself occurs on the second line of tab. 
So after we've played our E bar chord and then gone to our B bar chord, this is where the variation occurs. It's just the lick that differs. So we'll start by plucking the third and second strings again with that up stroke and then go fourth string. Then we'll need to pluck the first and second strings of our B bar chord. But as you do, you'll hammer on your ring finger to the ninth fret and then lift it and hit those two strings again. So in total for that bar. And that's just the small variation that occurs in the third verse of the song. Next we get to the bridge of our song and this part is fairly easy because it's just some chord shapes and a strumming pattern we need to learn. So we're going to start with an A bar chord like this, but instead of barring that fifth fret with our index finger, we're actually only going to push down the fifth fret of the second string and you're going to leave that first string open. So the A bar chord will sound like this. You get that really nice open first string. And then our second chord is an A minor, so we will need to go back and bar that index finger down like that. So your middle finger comes up as well from that sixth fret. That's A minor. Then we go to a G6 chord shape. Now that G6 chord will be the same shape that we had as our A chord like this, but just down two frets. Again, you want to leave that first string open. And then our final chord is F major seven, which is the same shape, just two frets down. So those are our four chords, A, A minor, G6, and F major seven. Now our strumming pattern here is going to be fairly simple as well. It just goes, down, up, mute, down, 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 up. And each strumming pattern is going to have two chords within it. And up here in the annotations, you'll see the point at which you'll need to change chords. So that will just occur on the second down strum. So we go down, up, mute, down, 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 up. And what I mean by mute is you can do a percussive down strum like this, but your palm will hit the strings before you actually do the strum. So you get that muted sound. Or you can just rest your palm on the strings so that you mute what's ringing. So again, it'll sound like this. Down, up, mute, down, 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 up. And then you'll do the same thing for the G6 to the F major seven. Down, up, mute, down, 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 down. And a total for the bridge. Next we get to our short break, which is in the bridge. And what we're going to do here is play just three chord shapes. It's really simple. So we'll bar our index finger across the 10th fret of the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings. And then your ring finger will hit the 12th fret of the 1st string. So that's the first chord shape. And we're going to strum this 16 times. So you can break this up into chunks of 4 to make it easier. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And then we go to our next chord shape. So you slide this index finger down one fret and your middle finger will now come down and hit the 10th fret of the first string. So that's our second chord shape. And we're going to strum this with eight strums. So two sets of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you're doing down up strums here. And our final chord shape is the same as a D chord shape. We're just sliding that up to seventh fret and eighth fret and you only can hit these top three strings. And we're strumming that with eight down strummers as well. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So in total for the break, Finally, the last thing I'll teach you is the outro. And it's essentially the same as the bridge same chords, so A, A minor, G6, and F major 7. But there's a few tiny licks that we'll throw in to make it sound really cool. For the first time we play that chord progression, there are no licks. The second time we play that chord progression, there's a lick after the A minor. So we're going to go down, up, mute, down, down, 
and then this is where the lick's gonna come in. So we need to quickly go to the third fret of the first string, hit that, and pull it off, and pluck it one more time. So in total, down, up, you, down, down. And then when we go to our G6 to the F, after the F we have another lick. So we go down, up, you, down, down. And the lick's gonna go like this. From this shape, you'll hit the second string and hammer on and pull off that third fret with your ring finger. And then go back to the second fret of the third string. So that's our lick. Down, up, you, down, down, lick. And in total for that progression, The third time we're playing that progression, we have this first lick, but we don't have this second lick on the F major 7. So it'll sound like this. And finally for the fourth time we play this progression, we go to the A, to the A minor. And the lick here is a little different. The lick's gonna go from the 5th fret of the 3rd string, hammer on, pull off, the seventh fret, and then end on the seventh fret of the fourth string. So down, up, you, down, down, lick. And to end this song, we go to a G sort of position, but you just need your ring finger here on the fifth fret of the fourth, middle finger on the fourth fret of the third. We'll have our index finger up here, so you don't need to push that down on anything. We'll pluck the third and second strings together and then your index finger does come down onto the 3rd fret of the 2nd string, hit that, and then end on the 4th string. And then we're going to move this shape down 2 frets, and we're going to do essentially the same thing. Have your index finger up first, pluck the 3rd and 2nd strings, put your index finger down, pluck that, and then end on the 4th string and that lick in total. And then we end on an A major chord, like that. So the very last progression sounds like this. Down, up, you, down, down, lick. So that's it for Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, probably one of my favourite songs of all time. So now I'll be doing a playthrough on the electric guitar and there'll be a vocal track on top for some context. So feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice play along to and see how you go.
Thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Be sure to head over to guitarzerodehero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you're stuck in a rut and you want to take your guitar to the next level, then be sure to join Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. As always, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, click that little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. Leave your thoughts, comments, questions and requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.